Hello everyone, Gabe here from Ubisoft, and I am joined by Senior Smart. Senior? Yeah, you've changed I, names again. I'm names are all over the place now. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. What are we doing today? So today we're going to look at caches. Caches. Yeah. Last time we covered kind of the fundamentals of RAM, mm -hmm. how things are actually stored and changed yep. in RAM. So we're going to go into more how RAM is used and how we can speed it up. Sweet. Let's get smart. <laughs> So, do you remember the zombie stuff we did in the, the CPU episode? Vaguely, yes. Vaguely, yes. yes. Let's refresh that a little bit. Okay. So we had some... Uh, yes, yes. Yes, we had some memory. And these were the locations of the zombies that yeah. we had. So one zombie is in location 142 on the x-axis and then 12 on the y-axis. Great. So, if you would have some code like this, this is basically going through every zombie and then getting a zombie out of the array and then changing the movement. Let me simplify this code a little bit because it's kind of outdated, a little, little nicer. So for every zombie in the list or container called zombies, I want to update X by the X movement and the Y by the Y movement. It's great. So you can imagine that a lot of code is behaving this way. We have a collection of things and you would like to go through it. You say, let's go through all the zombies. Let's go through all the players. Let's go through whatever the thing is. So that's kind of a more common behavior. Less common behavior is like going all over the place in the memory, right? Uh, you aren't very often random in your actions. You're very predictable in your actions. You like we don't want to create gaps. No, that's another thing. Yeah, we don't want to create gaps. So. There is a kind of predictability in how you use things. So in here, we're going through every zombie. Uh, so there's a thing called locality of reference. And that is the idea that uh, if you are using a thing in memory, it is very likely that you're using also the stuff around it. As in, in this idea, because we loaded memory address number 92, for example, it is likely that we want memory address 96 and so forth very soon. Maybe not now, but very soon. So let's think about how RAM might work or like more of a high level abstract idea of, of what we're doing. Just to refer to the last mm -hmm. episode, or is each one, two, three, or each number of those one of those yeah. uh, NOR gates? No, no, these are just, oh yeah, each one of these. So in a regular RAM, um, each one of these uh, is, because it's a DRAM, these are capacitors. Okay. That's a different kind of system. It's a little trickier to go into, but you can, if it helps you think about them as these gates, yeah, that's totally fine. Okay. Uh, and they're storing the values from one to 11, just for an, as an example. Um, so these are not the memory addresses, these are actually the, the numbers they're storing. Great. And we have some sort of CPU, but the CPU only has a certain number of registers it can use. Like in the, one of the early CPU episodes, uh, we, ha we had the CPU emulator we can store stuff in, in one of the registers. And each register can only store one number, but we're dealing with RAM that has millions of numbers. So it's a little different. So let's say we want to load five. Great. We pick where five is. We know in some way where it is in memory and we put it into one of the registers. Then we do something. We change it to, to let's say one and then we put it back, right? This was kind of the action we talked about. And then we want to take the next one, right? Here's the six, we put it in, change it to a two, and then put it back, right? Makes sense. So this takes about 100 nanoseconds. That's forever. That's yeah, we talked way about- Way too slow. Yeah, we talked about earlier, like 100 nanoseconds is a long time. Yeah. We can do a lot of stuff in 100 nanoseconds. Um, and then it's also, if a cycle is four nanoseconds, uh, no, a cycle is is not even a nanosecond. The CPU is sitting there for <laughs> just like uh, hurry up for like hundreds of nanoseconds, yeah. not doing anything. So that's not great. So there's a fix to this. A one cache. So what if we just take memory, make it smaller, put it actually closer to the CPU? Is that SRAM? That's SRAM. That's SRAM. That's SRAM. That's, SRAM. that's more like the the flip flop you talked about last mm -hmm. episode. So we make some memory, we make it smaller, we put it literally closer to the CPU, 
And what then happens is, let's say we want to load five, right? Like before, we want to load five, put it into CPU, change it, etc. What actually happens is you don't just load five, you load five, six, and seven. For example, you load a bunch of stuff around it. You might even, in some cases, load the three and a four, or just, yeah. But this is like a very small example. Like when you're actually loading, you're not loading three numbers. You're loading like way more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're loading a whole bunch. Because I think like L1 cache is really small. It's like bytes, right? Yeah, we'll go into how okay. big it is. Okay. Yeah. So this is for illustration purposes. You actually load a lot of yeah. stuff around it. So let's say we load a bunch of numbers and we put them all in the cache. But how, so so before before it's loaded those numbers, mm -hmm. how does the RAM know that those numbers will be even relevant for the CPU? That's in the program that's being run. The program that's being executed is running instructions. But is it first running those instructions to, on the RAM? And then uh, the CPU is reading those instructions? No, the, the CPU says, okay, we want to run this program. Yeah. Where's the program? It's here in memory. What's the first instruction? The first instruction is to load something. What should we load? Load this memory address. So, so, but it, so it is coming off the RAM yeah. to start with? Yes. But the CPU is saying, I need this now. Then it goes to RAM to grab that information. The CPU doesn't in itself say, I need this. Um, it's being given. Okay. It's just a, let's, you say, let's start at some point in the RAM, which is usually like uh, executed only for operating systems or for like the BIOS or whatever. You need to start somewhere. So you have this process of, it's like a chain reaction if you think of it that way. Uh, we start somewhere, let's execute things, execute things, it gets more and more complex, and then in the end, you have Windows or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Bam, done. Bam, done. Yeah, so some action or some program that was already loaded into RAM said, I need the number in this memory address, which happens to be, be where 5 is, and we don't just load the 5, we load the stuff around it. Because locality of reference says, it's likely that like common behavior is, you also want the stuff around it. Yeah. So if we put all of them also in the cache, and then we put the five in the CPU, we change it, and then put it back into the cache. When we want to load the six, it's going to be there in the cache, right? Yeah. So, and there's also a, a, a trick here. So the next thing I say is that, hey, we can just then put it back into the RAM. That's kind of different based on systems. There might be cases where you don't put it into RAM immediately, you put it only into RAM when someone wants to access it or when someone is changing it again, then you might think of it as flushing into RAM or whatever. But for this example, let's just say that we put it back into RAM. But the nice thing here is the CPU doesn't have to wait. Yep. The CPU can keep on running. This whole moving stuff from L1 back to RAM, that's somewhere that's being handled by not the CPU or, yeah. So. We say we want to load six, but six is already here. So th this is called a cache hit. The first one was, if I go back, I want to load five. This is a cache miss. It's usually called a cache miss. That means that, hey, okay, we didn't have it in the cache. Let's load it, put it in there, and now we can read it and do the things. Then we say we want six. That's a cache hit. It's already there. Yeah. It goes real fast. It goes real fast. How fast? <laughs> About one out of a second. But we wouldn't, we wouldn't notice a cache miss. Uh, or would we notice it when it's more like... You wouldn't notice a cache miss, but you would <laughs> notice if um, a million cache misses would be happening. How long does it take for a million cache misses to be happening? Uh, it's the ratio between 100 nanoseconds and 1 nanosecond times, so a, times a million. Oh. So, yeah, because it would have happen every time. A lot. A lot. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, if it takes the copying from CPU to L1, it's about one on a second. Uh, and then what you can do is you can just say, let's keep doing this. This is a nice idea. Uh, so let's make an L1 cache. Uh, on Intel's, it's about 32 kilobytes in size. Uh, usually it's split between, it's 32 kilobytes of data and 32 kilobytes of instructions. So sometimes it would just, ha just have the, ex the code you want to execute. Why do they? Why don't they just make L1 bigger? Why do they have three different ones? Um, there's a lot of. There's probably a lot of reasons why they do this. Uh, you'll see one of them in a bit, uh, but also just physical space. Physical space, and um, you. 
the benefit you're getting isn't that noticeable once it's like really big. Yeah. Uh, of course, if you would have a eight gig L1, it, like some of the, because you just have a lot of things, some of the bits would be actually farther away from the uh. CPU. So there's a lot of those considerations as well. So because I, I know I think Threadripper is have like 70 megs, mm -hmm. or maybe it's the new Ryzen mm -hmm. 9s. They have like 70 megs in cache size. Yeah, which seems big. Yeah, and, that, and this is great. I mean, if you're able to get bigger caches with the same speeds, then yes, good win. Win. Uh, yeah, L2 on Intel's is about 256k, and L3 is about 8 megs on some of the. Quite a big size jump there between L2 and L3. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because L1 is usually like immediate stuff you're working with. L2 is usually what you're working on. Secondary immediate almost. <laughs> yeah, because L1 also thinks about the, the instructions. The, yeah. yeah. L2 is just whatever. L3 is like the stuff you're generally working with. Yeah. Um, so the speed here, um, these are numbers I found uh, on some data sheet. Uh, L2, three nanoseconds, and then L3 is a big bit of a jump between nine and 14. Uh, infinitely long. Yeah, uh, apparently it matters. The the clock speed matters. As okay. Well. So you could have a little little bit faster access times if the clock speed is a little higher. But yeah, so it's a bit of a jump. But compared to RAM, this is nothing. Yeah. And so this is a, a a great win for the system. So you talked about like why not just bigger? Yeah. Because the L1 is actually in yeah. the CPU. Yeah. Uh, the L2 as well. Okay. Is just somewhere in the CPU. And it's a bit bigger. Yeah, and then L3 is L3. Uh, yeah, L3 is there. Okay. Yeah, so L3 is shared by everybody. Okay. <laughs> That's why it's bigger. It's also outside. Uh, Does that mean every single is that each core? Yep. Has one L1. That's 32. Yep. Or oh. Yep. Yep. So if you have a, what is it now? AMD has a 64 core. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of L1s. Yeah, if they design it that way, if they say that every core has an L1, then yeah, they can do that. But I'm thinking like general, yeah, stuff that's can change. A, that's a lot. Like these things are changing all the time. Yeah, I don't actually know if that's the case with AMD. It's just yeah. a thought should, in my head. Should be easy to find the data sheets yeah. for that. Cool. So there's a thing also um, that is important. So if we go back to this, we have some zombies, they're moving around, that's great. If this is the zombie entity that we have in our game, the entity that we're storing is just an X and a Y. There's nothing else happening. Then our RAM has these positions, like before. The zombies are somewhere on the map, and these are the representations that we decided from the last episode, that we decide that the number 12 there in 96 means the, the Y axis of the first zombie. We, we picked that. Yeah. It is not uh, how many donuts I can eat or something. Like it's, it is our representation. So, if I say I need value 92, it will load a bunch of those into all of the caches and then start working, right? And the caches aren't that big. So what if someone says, hey, can you add a feature that does this? So now we have the health as well in the structure of yeah. the zombie. We're not using the health in the loop over there, right? And you can see that it's pushed around, right? Yeah. So some of the data has been pushed down because now we have health, whatever the health is. This might not matter. Like this is small enough anyway that nobody notices. If someone measures this, nobody notices it. But if you keep doing this, if you keep adding, so now we have the Boolean, if it's alive, we have the damage, we have some zombie model. probably more representative of what actually happens with a zombie in a game. It could happen. It could, And this also could just be okay. Someone might sit down and look at this and actually go and measure it and say, no, nobody notices this. Could we get a situation where like half that information is cached so it doesn't know the Y value before it knows the X value, so you just get a zombie that's all distorted? Well, if it's not cached, you will have a miss and then it would force ah, it into okay. yeah damn i wanted just like zombies getting cut in half and then floating <laughs> in weird ways that'd be funny but if if we look at the loop again we're only using the x and, and y values we're never using health damage is alive zombie model yeah. ai controller whatever those things are just some random random things so in this loop when someone said hey i want to update zombie x with uh, the x moment 
and then zombie X isn't in cache, it will go into RAM and say, oh, where's zombie X? It's over here. Great. Let's load the stuff around it. It will load the Y, the health, the damage, the ACLI, the model, and the controller into cache, even if nobody actually used it. So if you keep doing this, then there might be over time some noticeable differences, some slowdowns, whatever. So what you generally want is this. You want your data to be packed because you don't, you want to put, like when the loading happens, you want that to go into cache and you want as much of it to go into cache. So if you have a million zombies, that you might fit all million of them into cache. But if you have this, you might only be able to fit 10,000 or whatever. So then you would go to 10,001, you would have a cache miss, and then you would load the next 10,000. So again, like it might not be noticeable when you're at this level. And it might, again, not be noticeable at this level, but it might be. Yeah. And that's a thing that- well, I, It would build up over time though, wouldn't yes. it? Yes, okay. yeah. So this needs to be- <laughs> I mean, over time, it'd build up very quickly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is the thing that uh, you need to think about if you're optimizing for FPS and, and thinking about like speed. So this is the thing people need to think about is that the data that's happening in the loop over there is being is as compact as possible and there's no stuff being loaded that's never actually used. So that actually might mean that if you look at a zombie like this, it's easy to look at. You're like, oh, I understand what a zombie is. But it might be faster to split the zombie down into a lot of components and then use them separately. It's harder to think about but the speed is immeasurable. So, there you go. Good stuff. Good stuff. RAM is uh, RAM is somehow more confusing than CPUs so far. Can be. I, I might have to rewatch this video to understand it a little bit more. Uh, but it's fast, mm -hmm. and caches are even faster. Yeah. So it's and uh, the dream is we all get SRAM. SRAM for everybody. That's what I've learned. SRAM for everybody. Yeah. I just want to throw SRAM at people. Cool. Good times. What are we doing next time? Next time, we might look at uh, some more of the like, modern ideas of like RAM. We talk about DRAM and, and those, those ideas. So stick around. Sweet. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.